Welcome back to Dirty Shirt Workshop, back on the oven, working on the gas system today. So the first thing that I've had to change, this was a natural gas setup. So the main burner orifice, I got to that. That's, uh, here, let me bring you in. That's down here, uh, the gas pipe, of course. So that was 120 thousandths, which is a 31, th uh, or, sorry, a number 31 gas orifice. That's the drill size. Uh, I found a good chart online for converting from natural gas to LP, and it says I need a number 50. So I was able to find one that's a number 52, which is a little bit smaller, bigger number, smaller drill. So I can drill it out if I need to, but I haven't done it yet, and there's a good reason why. So the pilot setup for this thing Hopefully you can see that good there. So this is the pilot. This has a pretty big hole in it. And there's not really an orifice for this that you can change. So my pilot's gonna be a little bit bigger than it needs to be. So what I'm hoping is with the too large a pilot, but the smaller main burner orifice, I'll have a relatively controllable and, and decent working setup. So. What else goes along with this? I bought my gas valve and a new thermocouple because there was no valve. So the way this works is a thermocouple, it gets hot, makes an electric charge. That holds a magnet open in your thermocouple to let the gas flow. If the pilot ever goes out, say if I open a door because I'm running a truck in and out when I'm using the oven, and the pilot blows out, then it'll cool off, it'll stop the charge, the magnet closes, or sorry, <laughs> the magnet releases and the valve will close and stop the flow of gas so I don't blow the shop up. So that's an important safety feature that I want to keep on this oven. So I had to get a valve for that. It's only like 100 bucks or so off eBay, 120 I think it was. I'll put the part numbers in the description. People keep asking me for that stuff. But I don't like to, I, I don't promote anything here, so I'm not like talking about the parts I use all the time, very, I'm very, very rarely. The other thing that's uh, really neat about this oven, I need a screwdriver just a sec, is the thermostat valve on it. So I'll bring you over here to check this out. So here's this, the thermostat valve. Uh, Robert Shaw, that is the, again, here I just said I don't promote, I'm not. Uh, that's the brand of the valve I found, the, the, the pilot valve and the thermocouple as well. So there's a neat thing with this knob. So you got this stake here, that's the stop for the knob. And you can see this little hump on here inside the knob, that's what stops there. Otherwise, this, there's just a set screw on here. So you can put this anywhere you want and set it so that the numbers on this thing will match up with the little arrow on, on the side here. Let's see if I can, hopefully you can see the, the little arrow right there. So even though this is different gas, I should be able to turn that and at least get one set temperature right that's gonna match up to my thermometer. Now, if you remember, this knob wasn't painted very well, so I cleaned it up, and then to paint it, I just brushed it with my paint marker, and then take a paper towel and wipe real lightly at the surface to clear the paint away, and that left paint in the grooves, but, but very little on the surface. There was still a little on the surface here and there. There's some right there. To clean that up, I just used 1,000 grit sandpaper, cleaned it up, I'm happy with the knob the way it is, okay? So the other things I have to do here is put the burner assembly back on, put on the thermocouple. I've got an old barbecue regulator for my gas. This just came off a little gas, four burner gas grill that I threw out. I save that. There's my new thermocouple uh, adapter for the pilot. I got the, the line, the old copper line for the pilot here. I've rebent it a little bit, so it should still work. And then we just got to put on the pilot assembly 
And then the burner assembly right here. So this is the two pieces are screwed together now. So this one goes all the way through, comes out, and you just have quit fall, falling over on me. You just got a little bit of gap here around the edge. Uh, most of this flow here for that hole, that comes from back here. So that gas orifice goes in through this hole. Then you can adjust this flap on threads to adjust how much oxygen your flame gets so you can get a good burning flame. And this is that bypass tube that pulls air from inside the, fern the oven to run through the burner and burn some of the volatile gases that you're getting off of that. Kind of like an afterburner, but it's a pre-burner and a kind of a dangerous one. So I'm going to go ahead and start getting this put back together. I set this up at an out angle just for this so I could set the valve up here if I need to move the oven and it's not messing around dragging on the ground. Okay, I've opened the valve and I hear no gas. That's good. That means the pilot valve is shut off. Now let's see if we can get the pilot going. That seems bad. I'm gonna have to pull us out of here and figure out what's going on. That ain't good. I thought I might run into something like this. So I did buy, I had new line on hand here. I got a new ferrule in here, got the line in tight. But there is actually a leak on the bottom here. Let me show you. So I got my air line hooked up here. Set you down. Make sure you can see. There we go. So I just give it real light air pressure here. That flame goes out almost immediately. I don't think it's supposed to be leaking gas out the bottom of that. So right there, see my pointer come in where it goes away? Right there at that tip. There's that's corroded completely through and that's the bottom of this. So this sits in there like that pretend this is the top here So that's completely corroded out right there I'm not gonna be able to fill that or patch it because this is all This is uh, all fit together welded and everything and you know, there's Yeah I'm gonna have to see if I can find something to retrofit for this because this thing is toast Okay, I found a suitable replacement. It came in. I got it mounted on the little bracket here with half of uh, this little drop L that was hooking it on. And have it adjusted out where it'll stick out as far as it can because this old one was basically here. So that's about the right placement. So that should work out okay. The other thing I did modify this a bit, you can see this ear goes a bit past here. This one, I actually sawed it off so it's the same. That way I can get my wrench in here and be able to tighten the gas line. So I can do the thermocouple first because I got room there, but then when I do the gas line with that bracket there, I wasn't going to have enough room to turn a wrench. So I took care of that. This is for propane. It's supposed to have the right orifice in it already. So that shouldn't be any trouble. Go ahead and get it put in, see what happens. I bet a brand new pipe here too.
works a lot better when you open the door the way you're supposed to. That's too much air. I can hear it fluttering. I think I'll make one of that. Burner gets warm. See if I can get the valve to change it. Okay, that's turning it down some. found the spot where it starts turning down, so I'll set that as the max temperature. There's the close, I got it right now. That's high. I can't really tell the difference. Turn the gas off, and then it's just the pilot. Now I'm just going to close my gas, let the pilot burn out. Thermocouple worked good. Held the valve almost instantly. Honestly, that pilot fire is a little big, but it should be fine. Well, I don't want to run this uh, any longer than that. It's really hot out, and I don't care to be adding heat in the shop. So I think I'm going to call it on this one. And in the next video, what you'll see is me hooking this into the stack and I'll probably actually run it up to temperature and see if I have to adjust the gas any. Thanks for watching.